happens today, though, is so much is on the line, and, and you, know, you have to look at it. It's an opportunity to go to the SEC title game for Tennessee, but they have to get through Kentucky first, plain and simple. Well, this is legitimately a big game, Craig, and I've played in a lot of big games in my career, Super Bowl being one of them, and I can tell you honestly, these players right now, they've been dreaming about playing in this game since they were little boys. All of us did. Today is the day they get to pay it off one way or the other. They're excited, but man, does it mean an awful lot. Yes, it does. Too <laughs> Weather today in Lexington, Kentucky, 45 degrees. Wind will not play a factor, and the forecast is for partly cloudy skies. Tennessee has won 22 in a row against Kentucky. The last time the Wildcats won, well, the year was 1984, and Ronald Reagan was in the White House. You can well, Tennessee has won the toss and has chosen to receive. Tennessee, 19th ranked in the country, coming off an incredible win against Vanderbilt last week, a 16-point fourth quarter. Kentucky did struggle in that loss to Georgia, 24-13. to So here we go, Commonwealth Stadium in its 35th season and a sellout crowd. Maste will kick it away. And we are underway in Lexington. Heading towards the near sideline, out of bounds, and they'll mark it with a flag at the 12-yard line. So Eric Ainge in Tennessee will start at the 35-yard line. Eric 24-9 as a starter at Tennessee. Let's check out the offensive line. It includes three sophomores and two juniors. They've allowed only three sacks. That's the best in college football. Backs and receivers, everyone gets a hand on the football in this Tennessee offense. Arian Foster just 11 yards shy of 1,000 yards on the season. So Ainge under center on first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Play action, throws back across the field, and the ball is right on the button. Arian Foster at the 20, the 15. Foster may go at the five. Touchdown, Tennessee. <laughs> 65 yards on the opening play in Lexington. <laughs> This is classic, it's just a straight fake handoff. It's a bootleg, but what happened? Kentucky completely forgot about the guy that Eric Ainge faked the handoff to. That's Arian Foster down the left sideline. Give credit to the Tennessee coaches. They saw something on film where they realized Kentucky kind of gets caught up in the action. Arian Foster, nobody within 20 yards of him. What a way to start the ball game. Unbelievable, 65 yards, second touchdown receiving for Foster and Daniel Lincoln, who's hit 42 of 43 PATs, kicks it through the uprights. 65 yards to start this game. First play in Lexington, Arian Foster, 65 yards, and Tennessee leads by seven on CBS. Tennessee has now scored a touchdown, Steve, on seven of their 12 opening drives this season, and that one, I don't believe most of the folks dressed in blue were even in their seats to see that one. Well, heck, we were barely in our seats. <laughs> 65 yards to open. Britton Colquitt has it teed up at the 30-yard line. Raphael Little and Derek Locke are set to receive for Kentucky. Good kick by Colquitt. And it is ooh, taken down at the 15-yard line. Well, the quarterback for Kentucky, the senior, Andre Woodson, thrown for nearly 3,000 yards, 30 touchdowns on the season. O-line is strong up the middle behind the seniors of Eric Scott and Jason Leisure. And the backs and receivers, Steve, I'll tell you, they provide many weapons for Woodson. Keenan Burton and Steve Johnson have combined for 16 touchdowns this season. Yeah, you know, Craig, the leading receiver for Kentucky only has 51 catches, but you got four or five More guys right. over 40, right. so the ball does get spread around as well as anybody in the country. And Woodson will set up the first play from the shotgun, a little pitch out, Raphael Little. Chased down from behind and dropped at the 15-yard line. Good pursuit. Mayo, the middle linebacker. Defensively for Tennessee, and the Volunteers like to rotate that defensive front. Xavier Mitchell anchors the starting four. Linebackers all about speed. Rico McCoy, Mayo, the average over eight tackles a ball game. The secondary is young, led by the freshman corner, Brent Vinson, and the strong safety, Eric Berry. 
third down and eight shotgun Andre Woodson long snap count pressure from the corner Woodson fires it up and incomplete incomplete the call Dicky Lyons junior the intended receiver and that brings up fourth down and eight you know this is an area too where Kentucky is the number two team in the ball, SEC ball, in ball, third ball. down conversions Craig converting almost over 48 percent last week against Georgia when they really struggled they were five of 16 very uncharacteristic for them and today right away they're facing third and long and they don't convert Mass day back to punt and Dennis Rogan back to receive inside his own 30 yard line Massey averaging 40 and a half yards per kick this season and had high high hanger terrific kick Rogan takes it at the 30 and has dropped at the 35 yard line dangerous return Rogan a pick up a five on the punt a 37 yard kick and a five yard return Tennessee with the early seven nothing lead here in Lexington on CBS. Well, Steve, the longest win streaks in college football belongs to Tennessee over Kentucky. 22 consecutive wins dating back to 1984. And that, that just became the leading streak in the country because uh, my alma mater, unfortunately, lost to, to Navy for the first time in about 44 years. So uh, the proud owners of this streak are playing here in front of us today. Now 22 straight games, Tennessee over Kentucky. 12.51 to play after that early touchdown. And Arian Foster scrambles and pushes for an extra yard or two up to the 38-yard line. And we look at Kentucky on the defensive end. That front likes to apply pressure to Ainge. Jeremy Jarman ranks number two in the SEC. Nine sacks on the season. The linebackers simply said it's two words. Wesley Woodyard averages over 10 stops a game. Hey, no one's better in the SEC. And the secondary is young. Three sophomores and the senior strong safety in Roger Williams. Boot goes Ains, throws it out, and it's caught by the big man. The tight end caught him. And caught him, breaks a tackle at midfield. Watch him run. Caught him, the senior, into the 20 yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, it's again another bootleg. Tennessee taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the Kentucky defense, not too disciplined on two plays, two big plays by the Tennessee Volunteers. Doesn't make any sense that a simple play like that, Brad Cottom can get that wide open and make such a huge gain on such a simple play, a play that every team has in their playbook. Cottom, a senior, has a brother who's a sophomore who also plays tight end, Jeff Cottom, and both stand 6'8". Brad goes 270, his brother 260. And Tennessee in business once again. Two big plays here in the opening quarter. Ontario Hardesty off the left side, inside the 20-yard line. And for Tennessee, it's very simple. You win today, and Tennessee clinches the SEC East. They'll head to Atlanta to play LSU for the championship, and they have the, they have the tie ba breaker. And because, see, we were in Knoxville when Tennessee turned their season around against Georgia. And I'll tell you what, that Georgia team is not the same team anymore. They are as good as anybody right now, playing as well as anybody in the country right now. I don't know who LSU would rather face because Tennessee looks pretty good right now. They've been hot as well. Three wide receivers set second down. And a throw near side, it's caught. Touchdown, Taylor broke a tackle of E.J. Adams. And Tennessee takes a 13-0 lead. Just a tremendous executed play by Eric Ainge and Lucas Taylor. Watch right here, this is by design. Ainge and Taylor both know that if the corner is overplaying him, E.J. Adams is overplaying him over the top, that's gonna be a back shoulder throw by design. Great communication, great decision making on both the part of Lucas Taylor and Eric Ainge. That's how you score a touchdown. That's exactly how you draw it up in the game, in the in the in the film room when you're sitting there talking about those things. Eric Ainge tosses his 21st touchdown throw of the season, fifth touchdown reception for Lucas. The point Daniel Lincoln with the extra point, and one more time, Taylor breaks the tackle and goes. 18 yards and Tennessee leads on the road by 14. Far in this game, Steve, 
You like these numbers, my friend, you old, you're, uh, the old quarterback. Six of seven, 171 yards in the first quarter. And, and I'll tell you what, it's been pretty darn easy for Tennessee. And that's not taking anything away from Eric Ains. He's made some very good throws as well. But the big plays to Cottom and the early, the first play of the game, to Arian Foster, tremendous. And then, of course, the strike to Lucas Taylor that was right on the money. Cole quit. A short kick at the 10-yard line. Burton takes it for Kentucky at the 25. Cuts and is taken down at the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. First and 10 Wildcats from the eye. First back through. Plows for about three. And Maurice Grinter will make it second down. And a call it seven. By the way, that last pass caught by Lions becomes the 11th player in Wildcat history with 100 career receptions. Final seconds of the opening quarter, winding down in Lexington. Big touchdown by Foster. First play of the game for Tennessee. Taylor from 18 yards, and it's 14-0 after one quarter. Well, Tennessee barking there on the opening quarter, put 14 points on the board, and Tennessee looks very focused. Of course, what, of course, what is at the stake? A trip to the SEC Championship next week in Atlanta. Tennessee wins, they're in. If they lose, Georgia goes to Atlanta, Steve to play LSU. Very simple, doesn't get any bigger than this. First play of the second quarter, Woodson on the keeper and picks up maybe two, three yards. Craig Bullard back, back along with Steve Berline as we start the second quarter. The first quarter just dominated by Eric Ainge over Andre Woodson, 194 yards passing in that opening quarter. Two big plays, the difference. Yeah, to only 19 yards passing by Kentucky. Who would have thought that? I mean, it's amazing. Both these teams have so much at stake. Kentucky coming in saying, hey, this is not about the Tennessee Volunteers and what's at stake for them. It's about us and what's at stake for us to go out on a, as a senior class and make a statement, get to a big bowl game. We've got to win this game. Well, they better start playing some better football offensively if they're going to win this game. Tennessee brings pressure. Woodson able to fire that ball over the middle. Caught for a first down. Jacob Tammy, 45th reception of the season. Mayo brought the heat and put the hurt on Woodson. Andre able to stay in that pocket just long enough to find Tammy. It was actually, I think, Robert Ayers coming off the side, Craig, right there. Boom, number 91 meeting him in the backfield. That's a big boy coming with a full head of steam. Tremendous play in Woodson. Well, he's, he's been sacked once, hurried twice, knocked down three times, and still over 12 minutes to play in the first half from the I formation. First and 10, Kentucky in the blue zone. Looks one way, looks the other, has a man. Touchdown, Kentucky! Steve Johnson's drive. Back-to-back -back grabs, and Johnson pulls down his 10th touchdown of the year. And a huge block on the third down conversion, but right there, that's the one that's going to make the highlight film. Tremendous throw and catch. Andre Woodson saw man-to-man -man coverage, had no doubt where he was going with that football, and then delivered beautifully for the first payoff the, of the day for the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah. Woodson just passed Tim Couch for second place all time on Kentucky's total offensive yards list. 8,185, 17-yard touchdown for Steve Johnson. Drops it, man coverage. Touchdown, Kentucky back in it. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Well, this is a quarterback's dream right here. You're going to see one, two, three Tennessee defenders lined up man to man. You're going to see a straight fade up the sideline, fades across the board, and a perfect execution by Andre Woodson to Steve Johnson. Exactly what a quarterback's supposed to do. Use his eyes. He looked to the right to pull the free safety that way and then delivers a beautiful ball over the top for the touchdown and to get t uh, the Kentucky Wildcats back into this ball game. Yeah, Kentucky went 11 plays. They marched 70 yards, less than four minutes on the clock. And the difference, of course, Woodson on that drive after some early struggles went four or five for 49 yards. Capped off by that grab by Johnson. Man covered, 17-yard touchdown. Good kick. And Rogan will take it at the one-yard line. Right up the gut at the 20. Lowers his pads and taken down at the 25-yard line. There's Steve uh, Brown, the defensive coordinator. Middle of your screen. First year as the defensive coordinator. Some of the last four as a DB coach. 
Shotgun formation, Tennessee two of four on third downs. It's gonna be short as Chris Brown is tackled by Johnny Williams, a strong side linebacker. So Kentucky playing their lanes and very little room for Chris Brown to do his thing. And Mr. Lincoln is gonna come back out here. Daniel Lincoln, actually no, they're not a little, little too far for the field goal. It looks like they're gonna punt it. It would be about a 46 yard field goal yeah, that they are gonna go with it. Well, Lincoln missed from 47 on the other end of this field late in the first quarter. This is gonna be actually a 45 yarder. This will be a 45 yard attempt, missed from 47. Far hash, high snap, the kick is away. And it floats through from 45 yards. That ball floated in fl slow motion. What a 45 yard kick by Lincoln and Tennessee builds a 10 point lead. 17-7 in Lexington. 8.57 to play first half in Tennessee with a 10 point lead. Line drive kick. Jeez. Takes a bounce. This one may head out of bounds. It's picked up at the 26 yard line by Burton and wrapped up as he squirms his way to the 40, call it the 38 yard line. And see one key in this ball game so far in this first half. Andre Woodson has felt pressure up the middle and from the sides. Yeah, we've been talking about it. You can see Tennessee again has not been known this year for the pressure on the quarterback, but today I guarantee you Andre Woodson he right there pleading with the referee. Hey, that was a little bit late, man. Throw the flag. But the bottom line is he knows they're coming. They've already made that very clear to him. Two hurries, three knockdowns, and a sack. Down by 10. Kentucky takes the football at their own 37-yard line. Handoff. Here comes Rafael Little. Turns the corner at the 40 and steps out of bounds. That stops the clock at the 43-yard line. And you know, Craig, sometimes a block doesn't have to be pretty. And right there on around that left side, you had Jacob Tam. T Jacob Tammy tied in on the left side. He was trying to block JT Mapu. And you're going to see right on the left side of your screen right here, he just barely gets a piece of him. And the man's really too big for him to block one-on-one -on -one all over the field. But he did a good job of just holding his ground and getting a piece of him and let Little get around the edge. Now the Wildcats have made three of their last three third down conversions. You look at third down and five. It's over eight minutes to play. Backside pressure, and Woodson never saw Richard Kemp, Ricardo Kemp, coming. And that, that was just a complete bust by somebody. Kemp coming off the backside. You can see him standing there at the top of your screen. He's coming off that edge, untouched. That's an absolute dream for a defensive player. For some reason, the Kentucky Wildcats had not accounted for them. Now, Kemp is a safety. And in many, many protection schemes, I know for a fact that Andre Woodson, the quarterback, is responsible for the safety. Maybe he got a little bit confused as to what position Kemp was playing. That's the only thing I can think of. He might have had to have been hot on that play instead of thinking he was protected. Mass Day will punt away at the 25-yard line. High hanger and a fair catch. And Logan has to dive. Loose ball. Oh, and he came up with it. Somehow. He pinned that ball underneath his body. I don't know how he did it. At the 34-yard line, you could hear a <laughs> gasp oh. here in Lexington. 31-yard kick, and that ball just died down off the foot of Mastay. First down, Tennessee, 110 to play. Great look at Philip Fulmer in his 16th year. Of course, played at Tennessee, assistant coach, now the head coach. He's led the Vols to 14 bowl games. One of only six head coaches in the NCAA, active head coaches that have over 100 plus wins over the 500 mark. 145 and four record here at Tennessee. And a national championship in his back pocket, 1998 with T. Martin at the helm. Ames, good protection, throws out to the flat. It's a little pitching catch. Pat, there's a tackle broken. And Arian Foster having his way in that secondary of Kentucky to the 45 yard line. First and 10, Tennessee late here in the second quarter. A super job by Arian Foster. Open field run and making a quick move and then making, making a decisive cut up the field. 
not a great job by Kentucky on the tackling. They were in great position. They just kind of got stuck with their feet in the ground and Arian Foster made him pay convert another first down. Over 100 yards of total offense in the first half for Foster. Taylor and Briscoe. And a four wide receiver set. Ames dances and fires up over the top. Oh, it's picked off at the 31 yard line. 43 seconds for Kentucky to work with here in the second quarter. And that was a little bit greedy by Eric Ainge. He, he saw, thought he saw a scene the Luke, Lucas Taylor, but a great job of baiting him into the throw. A super job of getting that ball deflected, tipped up into the air. And then, of course, the finishing off. Pulling it in, that was uh, Paul Warford that made the interception, and Trevard Lindley, number 32, is the one that tipped it. He kind of baited Ainge into throwing that ball, and that's the first interception in Ainge's last 123 attempts. What a great play for Kentucky. Last time he threw a pick, October 27th against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. So Kentucky with a chance, time a factor, 43 ticks, and that oh! ball is taken away. Rumbling, stumbling, and down goes Mitchell. Xavier Mitchell, and there comes Ainge. Oh. So back-to-back -back interceptions, and Tennessee with an opportunity to maybe put three on the board before halftime. Oh, my goodness. It, what can you say? I mean, Woodson thinks he's throwing a, 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 an easy screen pass, but Mitchell just all of a sudden pops up, and I, I, can't, fault Mitch, I can't fault Woodson for that. He didn't see Mitchell. But boy, if you're not sure, if you can't see it, you gotta be a little more careful. But look at that, right there, all of a sudden, Mitchell comes off the block and the ball hits him right in the chest. What a gift. You got him all the way, you got him all the way. It's a lineman's dream as Ains throws it out to the flat. Kentucky on the run, can't chase him down. Foster weeping his way to the 15 yard line. A pick up a three the hard way. And the clock stops with 23 seconds to play in the half. Timeout. Tennessee by 10. Well, the hero on defense on that last drive, Xavier Mitchell with the pick for Tennessee and gives the football right back to his teammate, Eric Ainge. First interception this season for Mitchell. 23 ticks left on the second quarter clock, second down eight. Tennessee up by 10. At the 16-yard line, shotgun, Ains dances, drops it up over the middle on the sliding grab. Touchdown! Hancock for Tennessee. And Xavier Mitchell right there, number 93, the reason coming up with that big interception. Hancock stepping up and making a play when his chance comes up. A good quick decision by Eric Ainge. What? Nothing worse than that for Rich Brooks in Kentucky when they see, oh boy, they get all excited, they get an interception. Ainge doesn't make many mistakes and try and capitalize and then to have it taken away from you that quickly and then converted the other way for seven points. Not a good situation for Kentucky right now. 15 yard touchdown, sliding touchdown for Hancock. Daniel Lincoln in to try the point after. Low snap, the kick is away and splits the uprights. That's the end of the first half with the score, Tennessee 24 and Kentucky 7. Let's go to Tim Brando in New York. Moments away to start the third quarter here in Lexington. Tennessee 19th ranked in the country with a 24-7 lead on the Wildcats. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Verline. Boy, the crowd's been down. Kentucky's been down. Eric Ainge has been way up, 271 yards, passing three touchdowns, and it's been the big play, the quick hitting offense of Tennessee in this ballgame. Well, you're exactly right, Craig. And the, the first play of the game is when it started for Eric Ainge. He came out, found Arian Foster down the left sideline for the big statement on the opening play. Hey, boys from Kentucky, we're here to play, and it's going to be a long day. It sure has for the Wildcats, especially their defense. Ainge again right here, the Lucas Taylor hookup for the touchdown. Beautifully executed back shoulder throw. And then right before the half, finding Hancock in the back of the end zone, taking advantage of the re-turnover from Andre Woodson following Eric Ainge's one bad play, the interception. 
you see the passing yards, huge difference, almost 200 yards. And Andre Woodson has not thrown for less than 200 yards in 17 straight games, but it's been complete domination by the Tennessee Volunteers over Kentucky from start to finish. I expect that Rich Brooks probably got into his team pretty good, pretty firmly at halftime. And I think these guys will come out and try and get the crowd into it right away, see if they can get some momentum going, play with a little bit more passion. You think he gave uh, Philip Fulmer a call and said, can you send me that speech you gave last <laughs> week against Vanderbilt? Yeah, woke his team up, but Rich Brooks hoping obviously for the same result. And Burton takes a knee five yards into the end zone. Kentucky down by a score of 24 to 7. And we'll start this third quarter at their own 20 yard line. Woodson 7 of 13 in the first half for 78 yards. The season average, look at the difference 265 yards on the average this season and held just to 78 yards passing through two quarters. Yeah, it, it, this, they're not used to being in this position, the Kentucky on, uh, offense. They are used to dictating and dominating, and it has not happened today, and it starts with up front. His offensive line has got to keep the Tennessee defensive front from getting to him. Five wide receiver set, and three to the top side of your screen. First and 10 as we start the third quarter, and Woodson Sling shots it to the flat. Raphael Little bumped out of bounds around the 31-yard line, and that will be close. In fact, that is a first down. They will move the chains. 11-yard pickup. And on the first half of play, Woodson, Little, and Johnson. How about the big three? 88 yards for Woodson now. A touchdown and a pick. Little has had 15 carries for 53 yards, and two balls caught by uh, Johnson for 32 yards and the touchdown. And they bring the pressure. Woodson spots his man, and the ball is caught by Burton. He was down. He was down. He was down. Tennessee he was down. claiming they have recovered the fumble, but the official on the spot has it down at the 47. Yeah, Tennessee trying to sway a little bit the referee's decision, but I think you'll see. The runner is ruled down at the spot here. First down. Kentucky and a good job again by uh, Andre Woodson of seeing the pressure getting rid of the ball quickly and you'll see he's down right there the ball comes out when it hits the ground that's not going to be a fumble now Keenan Burton terrific wide receiver a Bolitnikoff finalist and 23 career touchdowns number two all time at Kentucky first and ten in the Wildcats knowing they must find the end zone here in the first possession of the third quarter Slink shot outside to the 40 yard line and Burton back to back catches Vincent the freshman left corner and on the tackle. Well, it's pretty apparent that the way Rich Brooks and Joker Phillips have decided to attack this Tennessee defense in the second half is going to be with quick stuff. They don't want Woodson out there taking any more hits. They want to get the ball moving move the chains short completions try and slow down that front of, of Tennessee as they get going into the second half. Quick three step drop near side. It's caught by the tight end Tammy into the 30 yard line. So the chains continue to move for the Wildcats. Jacob Tammy senior out of Danville Kentucky. Now Woodson all of a sudden is up his totals to nearly 130 yards through the air after the struggles in the first half. Now so far that's the play of the third quarter to see if Kentucky can't get themselves back in this football game down 24 7 again the five or five wide receivers set they've done exclusively with that here in the third quarter this is a design play on the keeper and Woodson will fall past the 15 of the 13 yard line a pickup of four second down for tennis uh, for Kentucky Dan Williams to stop. Well, that was that was kind of a, a strange play. It wasn't really a quarterback draw, but it surely wasn't a quarterback sneak. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Carl, the linebacker right now for Tennessee, he got he went up and moved the ball back about six inches from where the referee put. None of the referees even saw that. <laughs> Second down and eight. Woodson drops it. Little has room. Five. Pushes to the four yard line. Oh, great effort by Raphael Little. Eric Berry put the shoulder pads on Little 
And it's going to be first and goal at the four-yard line. The right play at the right time. You see McCoy right there, Rico McCoy coming off the side. The blitz was coming. Rafael Little was split out to the left side. They had a quick screen set up to him. He caught it on the move, got it behind his big offensive lineman. And, man, that was a great call. Perfect result. Kentucky threatening at the three-yard line now going in. How about this drive of 13 plays that started at the 20-yard line? Exactly what Kentucky needed here to start the third quarter in Lexington. First and goal. They'll mark it at the four-yard line. Once again, the five-receiver set. High snap. Woodson able to grab it, and he's going to be game-tackled and pushed back for a yard loss at the five-yard line, led by Robert Ayers. You know, Craig, right there, that was that, I think it was the same play. It was a direct snap to Woodson. It's a design run. He's, but it was a bad snap he couldn't get into. It's almost like Tim Tebow does at Florida where they, they actually design the runs up inside for the big physical quarterback. Now, let's don't mistake Woodson for Tim Tebow. <laughs> there aren't many quarterbacks I've ever seen that can take the ball up in there between you know, the tackles. Alex, like Alex Smith did it at Utah, but of course the head coach was the same, Urban Meyer. Right, right. Second down and goal, 9.43 left to play. Third quarter, shotgun, Woodson. Looks for the end zone, has a man, touchdown, Kentucky! Dickey Lyons Jr. with his seventh reception for six this season. Boy, did Kentucky need that right there, Woodson. You can see the relief on his face when he's walking off the field. Rich Brooks says, that's what I'm talking about. Really well-designed play. Kentucky obviously saw that the way that the Tennessee defense plays that little red zone goal line defense, they just drop about halfway back into the end zone, and there is space behind him over the top with a tall quarterback. He can drop it in there like he did the Lions. Sieber will try the extra point, boots it up, and good. So Kentucky responds to Rich Brooks's pleas at the half as it's Woodson up and over. Great grab by Lions Jr. 24-14, Tennessee. 14 plays, 80 yards, and Woodson answers. Seven of nine, 67 yards passing on that drive. And in the first half, he was seven of 13 for 78 yards with an interception. That drive right there, he doubles his completions. Kentucky, the fans gotta believe they're back. Short kick, fumbled at the 12-yard line. Creer picks it up, and Tennessee will start this first drive of the third quarter at the 15-yard line. Now this is where Kentucky's defense has to make a stand. They really do. They, uh, th th this is this is a now or never time here. How bad do you want to get to that bigger bowl game? You got to show it right now on defense. Eric Age under center. Lob it up top and is caught. Foster tried to dance down the sideline and a little dipsy do there by Philip Fulmer. Oh, indeed, and Tim, that uh, that BCS picture still very scrambled, and maybe it becomes a little clearer tonight when Missouri and Kansas battle it out in Kansas City. 24-14 here in Lexington as Foster trying to carry the load for the Vols on the offensive end. Yeah, that BCS picture will clear up. As we know, LSU isn't going to be up there anymore. They're going to drop a little bit, and then Kansas, Missouri going head-to-head. -head. One of them's going to move up. One of them's going to move back. West Virginia's going to scoot up in there, could realistically get up to, to number two. All things considered, you know, they could. How about Ohio State just hanging out there, waiting to see what happens in front of them? Yep, Ohio State's going to be right in the mix. You go on down the line, that, that those first six or seven teams all have a legitimate chance of getting in there. Second down and eight. Ames with a three-step drop, drops it off in the flat. It's caught in a reach out. Chris Brown, first time. Well, we've talked much about Brown today. He's involved in this offense, but so many defenses concentrate on stopping Chris Brown. And today he's had trouble getting his hands on the football. Now, and he's not one of those guys that's featured very often. He's only got 36 catches on the year coming into this game. And, but, but he does present a very unique matchup problem because of all the things they can do with him. And he will make some big plays when given the opportunity. Tennessee trying to put this game out of reach if they can. The cut. No, no, it's and over. Foster is dropped at the two yard line. Second down and goal as the clock reaches two minutes left in the third quarter. 
Foster today, 18 carries for 61 yards. The two coaches, Fulmer and Brooks. Brooks very proud that Kentucky football. All he says we need to do now to match Tennessee's and the LSU's is depth. Yeah. It's all about depth here in Lexington. Second down and goal, 10 on the play clock for Ames under center. Play action, rolls out, now steps up, throws the yeah. other way, and it's caught by Cottom. Jeff Cottom. Brother Brad had a big catch in the first half. Now, brother Jeff gets his turn. The Cottom brothers strike again. Now, this is another one of those half semi roll bootleg action type of things where Tennessee, you got to give them credit. You got to really give David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, and Phil Fulmer the credit for creating a scheme, a game plan. A lot of these semi roll type things and throwing it back the other way have left Tennessee wide open on the other side of it and of course the players have to execute it but the timing of the call and the design of the play have been absolutely spectacular all day long. Daniel Lincoln in to try the point after and the kick is good. So Jeff Cottom sophomore from Germantown Tennessee is only his fourth catch of the season and his first touchdown grab for Tennessee 31 14 volunteers. Now Jeff Cottom exchanges some high fives on that Tennessee sideline. 31-14 balls. How about five plays, 30 yards, and less than two minutes off the clock on that drive. So now Kentucky, Steve Berline will have to answer back and get this crowd, Big Blue, back in it in Lexington with 1.31 to play in quarter number three. Well, Kentucky's at that point now where they've got to they've got to force the issue. They don't have the luxury anymore of being able to sit back and and really just stick with their game plan. They've got to get some points on the board. It's now a, a three score game. So you, the question is, can you get it in the end zone and get the ball back enough time to get it to make this a ball game? Good kick. Burton. Cut back at the 20 and slides to a stop at the 21 yard line. Second down and 10. Andre Woodson sets up in the shotgun. Five wide receivers. Woodson looks downfield now. The pressure again. Tucks and runs. Picks up a nice block. He'll now throw on his back foot. Deep. Oh, it's taken away. It is caught by Tammy. Wow. In a battle with Barry. First and 10. Wildcats at the Tennessee 38. That's one of the rules I've always absolutely loved about offensive football. If two guys catch it, the offensive guy gets it. But I'll tell you, Eric Berry really was the first one to catch that ball. But Tammy doing a super job of giving that extra effort to get both paws on that ball and knowing that if they both catch it, it goes to Kentucky. Senior Jacob Tammy out wrestles the freshman Eric Berry, a pickup of 40 yards. And all of a sudden, Kentucky is back in business. Little option play. And the pitch out near side, it's Rafael Little stacked up down near the 35-yard line. A pick up a two. You, you know who Andre Woodson reminds me of running that option? Another guy that wasn't too comfortable doing it back in his heyday, myself. <laughs> Lou Holtz, I had Lou Holtz his first year at Notre Dame, and he made me run the option about four or five times a game. And I wasn't a real mobile guy, but it was just enough. Oh, oh. To you, keep the what? Are you going to do your Lou Holtz impersonation? I'm not going to do any Lou Holtz impersonation. No, 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 no. But Woodson, he's running about three or four times a day. It hadn't been too successful, but something else for Tennessee to think about. 30 seconds left, third quarter, handoff. Little stop and go. Lock the freshman, breaks free, has speed, has power to the 14 yard line. Wes Brown brought him down and saved the touchdown, and this crowd is alive as we. Stretch into the fourth quarter. 19 ticks left. First and 10. Big blue. You know what that play told me right there, Craig? That play told me that when Raphael Little leaves Kentucky, the running game's going to be in good hands. That Derek Locke looked like he knew exactly what to do with that football. Tremendous cut, tremendous burst, and a big play for the Wildcats. 21 yards for the freshman from Hugo, Oklahoma. At the 15 yard line, a little quick throw, far side, it's caught, big play. Tammy reaches out, out of bounds at the two yard line. Kentucky may find the end zone before we close out the third quarter. They might. 
They might. They, they look like, for whatever reason, they're coming out with a little bit of spark on this drive. That catch by Tammy down the sideline got this crowd back into it, and, and maybe it got this whole offense believing, hey, you know what? It just takes a couple plays to get back in this game. Let's see if we can do it. First and goal. Kentucky down 31 14. They're a powerhouse team in the fourth quarter, outscoring their opponents 102 to 67. And the final 15 yet to come. Woodson, play action, throws, corner, touchdown, Tammy, Kentucky. How about that drive? They answered the touchdown by Cottom and one second remains in the third quarter. And a great throw and catch there. Almost a little bit too late by Woodson. Tammy came open really quick, but Woodson had to get outside and roll and almost missed his window to get that ball in there, but put it right on the money. And Tammy, boy, did he make up a couple big plays in that drive, really get this crowd back into it. Lona Sieber will try the extra point. Now buckle up for a fourth quarter. Kentucky's had great success in the fourth this season. And the chip shot is up and good. Tammy scores corner of the end zone. Fifth touchdown reception of the season. Wide open. Yep, you see how quickly he comes open, but Woodson, he's got to turn around and find him. It almost gives Hefney Number 33, a chance to get back in there and break that play up, but the ball is put right on the money, up and over the top, and it's a touchdown. Final play of the third quarter. Ainge under center, gonna roll out and throw it. On his back foot, oh, a collision at the 42-yard line, but somehow, Cottom hung on. Boy, oh, the Cotton brothers with a big ball game here in Lexington, and that ends the third quarter with the score. Tennessee 31 and Kentucky 21. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back, Lexington, Kentucky. We start the fourth quarter with Tennessee, 19th ranked, leading by 10, and with the football, Eric Ainge under center. Drops back in the handoff. Hardesty pushing his way to the 45-yard line. Well, this crowd, you can just feel, you can just feel Big Blue trying to find some fourth-quarter rhythm. And, and they're, they're getting this crowd back into it. Eric Ainge right there, that was one of the very few, I think, bad decisions he made. He had Chris Brown in the flat uncovered out in front of Austin Rogers. Should have been his first read. He passed it up, went to Austin Rogers, who was pretty well covered. Incomplete pass. Tennessee, four of nine today on third down conversions. Ains from the shotgun, good protection. Throws it, picked off! That ball hung just a bit, and Lindley pulled it in for Kentucky. Only the sixth interception thrown by Ains. And I'll tell you what, you do your background check on this guy, Trevard Lindley right there, number 32, you'll find that this guy has done nothing but consistently make big plays, big interceptions in big games. He intercepted a ball in the LSU game this year that sealed the win. He intercepted a pass late in the game against Louisville to win, to, to win the game or help win the game. This kid stepping up whenever he needs to and showing he can be a big timer. Woodson play action pass, far sideline incomplete. Nope, they're gonna run up and call it incomplete. Burton trying to keep his toes planted and he was out of bounds. That stops the clock and second down and 10. Well, let's see, let's check it out. Let's see if yeah, that, that hip hit out of bounds before the ball got there and he never really had control anyway. Well, you have Rich Brooks, the head coach, 
Crowd has second guess or out guess, I should say, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator of Tennessee. Two wide outs near side, second down 10. Woodson goes under center, play action. Drop it off. A lot of room to rumble, watch out. Little out of bounds inside the 15. Raphael Little. Robert Ayers laid a shot on Woodson like you wouldn't believe. This is the quarterback's worst nightmare. He's stepping into the throw, and he's lifted off the ground and driven into the ground. Full body weight of Robert Ayers, and that is, my friends, 260 pounds. And watch how he steps, and he's lifted, and all that weight comes down on top of Andre Woodson. If he's fortunate, he just got the air knocked out of him. What a great gutsy play on his part to deliver that ball on the money to Little. Now you've been there, what's I've this been feel there. like? It does not feel good, trust me. I don't miss that part about the game at all. But he's able to suck it up and put it right on the money to Rafael Little. He's gonna be back into the next play. That showed me a lot right there, showed Red, me how tough that kid is. Redshirt freshman Mike Hartline has to come off the bench cold. He's four of six passing this year for 34 yards. He's not passing. He's gonna hand off instead to the fullback Connor. And Andre Woodson, if he can uh, clear his head a little bit and catch his breath, will come right back in for Kentucky. Boy, a tale of two halves. 180 yards here in the second, two touchdowns after a 7 of 13 performance in the first half. And here comes Andre Woodson. You know, second down and six. And you know, he wasn't too impressive, Craig, in that first half. And Really has been struggling to find his rhythm. The second half has been a lot better, but I've been impressed by his guts and his toughness this whole game. He's not afraid to step in there and take a hit. Three wide receivers to the far side. Ooh, that ball was batted down incomplete as Woodson tried to find Little coming across the seam. Now the clock coming up on six minutes to play, and Rich Brooks may have a decision to make here very soon. That is to go for the seven, the six, and the, and the PAT, or do you go for three? Well, if, if it depends on what happens on this play right here, but I think if, if they do not get in, I think you have to take the three points because you got to come out of it with something on this drive. You can't, you can't come out empty. You say either way you need a touchdown and a field goal. Take the field goal. You've got plenty of time left. Now you got to go score a touchdown next time. They're down in six. Man coverage. Up and oh. cut! Touchdown! Steve Johnson! He out jumped the freshman. What a What an unbelievable play by Steve. Johnson man right there you I talked a little bit earlier about Lindley on the other side making big plays for the defense you look at what Steve Johnson has done this year a 57 yard touchdown pass against Louisville with 28 seconds left and a big one in triple overtime against the LSU and that big upset the extra point is good I mean, that's a big play guy stepping up making another big play that's what he does buckle up down the stretch 31 28 Tennessee and Steve Johnson out jumps Brent Vinson in the corner and Kentucky still breathing in Lexington. Welcome back to Lexington a little early to celebrate still down by three over 19th ranked Tennessee. You look at the timeouts Kentucky with all three remaining Tennessee with two and that last scoring drive Kentucky's had away this uh, this day Steve scoring quickly when needed eight plays 66 yards two and a half minutes off the clock and they needed it. You got that right. They sure needed it right there. No, none more so than that one. So the kickoff is away. Rogan at the nine yard line at the 20 at the 25 still on his feet breaks a tackle in Tennessee with good field position at the 30 yard line. And here comes Eric Ainge. Now you have to remember Steve two ways to look at it. You can continue to play game plan type of football, and, or, or you can get a little conservative, and that can come back and bite you. And if I'm Phil Fulmer, number one, I know that I, I probably made a mistake on that last drive, being a little too aggressive. Right here, you got to stay with your game plan. You've got to make some first downs. If nothing else, you've got to pin Kentucky way back. But you really need some points to feel good about where you're at. Play action goes Ainge, steps up in that pocket, man coverage. It's out of bounds. Out of bounds. 
Oh, a great effort by Rodgers, who tried to put a foot down or two. And he kicked up some chalk, but out of bounds. And you know, the other thing that's going through Philip Fulmer's mind is that Kentucky, as you said, they have risen to the challenge the last couple of times they've had the ball. They've gone down and scored. And there you can see Rodgers comes down that foot right on the line. Good call. But Fulmer knows that if he gives the ball back to Kentucky, they have found some rhythm this second half. Ames this quarter, one of six passing, 10 yards and an interception. So what do you do when you struggle a bit? You go to the man, Arian Foster. Clock runs. Biggest play of the ball game right here. Third and seven. After a quiet first half, Big Blue is awake in Lexington. Third down and seven. Under five and a half to play. It's a three-point Tennessee lead. Ainge from the shotgun. Sets up. Lobs it up high. Incomplete. Terrific downfield coverage, Steve, that forced that, that throw by Kentucky secondary. It really was. You don't see Eric Ainge holding the ball back there that long normally. He knew he had to find somebody up the field to move those chains. And the crowd here sensing what's going on, I guarantee you, there's a few Red fans down there in Georgia that know what's going on too. The Georgia Bulldog fans knowing that if Kentucky can get ahead of this ball game, they may be booking a date next week to the SEC championship. Cole quit his fourth punt, his longest of 44. He'll need a boot here and will kick away from his own 20 yard line. Pressure got it away. Good hang time. Little pedals back, takes it, trying to turn outside at the 30. Bumped out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Corey Peters. 42 yard punt, a seven yard return. From the shotgun, Woodson flares it out to the flat. Rafael Little dances down the sideline and steps out of bounds. Did he? Yes, they're going to stop the clock. 209 left to play. So that brings up second down and 11. 2.09 to play. Woodson steps up, good protection, deep ball. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Johnson. And I'll tell you, Willingham was in a great position to take that ball away. Well, it was really a bad ball by Andre Woodson. He had Steve Johnson open down the side. Let's see how Johnson's come back to it. He was open down the sideline. Willingham did a great job of fighting back into it. But the most important thing right now for Kentucky, they've got to find a way. Don't get desperate. You need a first down. You got plenty of time. You're going to have plenty of chances to get in field goal range. Get the first down right now. They're down and 11. Woodson surveys up and cut. Oh, oh did he put that on the money to Tammy? Craig, you were going to see Brent Vincent, number 13, the freshman corner, had a chance to catch his ball almost. Watch his ball slip right by his hand. He's right there coming up right there. Look at that. He actually did tip it. He got a finger on that ball and an unbelievable catch to pull that in. What an afternoon for Tammy. Nine receptions, oh. 104 yards, and he keeps Kentucky. Kentucky's come back moving. Little slant. Oh, Burton spins out of one tackle and down at the 48 yard line. Great and balance. Clock though running. Busy day. A pump by Woodson has room, throws it out to the flat. Far side, it's caught by Little. Has room. Close to the first down, I believe he got it. And he stepped out of bounds to stop the clock. That is excellent field presence by Andre Woodson, knowing, hey, you know what? We're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. If it's not there up the field, much better to get half of it back. And you know what? This guy with the football is pretty good. Number 22, when he gets the ball in the open field, he can do something with it. 
He got a first down. Very good decision by Andre Woodson. And Little with his ninth catch for 94 yards. This time they're going to go up the gut. And Little is taken down at uh, the 46 yard line of Tennessee. Now, Kentucky will use the timeout with 118 to play, and all Eric Ainge can do is watch mm -hmm. and try to hold and believe that three point lead will be enough. 118 to play in Lexington. 31 28, Tennessee. It was 24 7 balls at the half. A tail, really, of two halves. Tennessee got off to the fast start. Arian Foster, first place, 65 yards. And now we find ourselves, Kentucky trying to come back to tie this game or maybe win it in the final minutes. And Kentucky needs to get to realistically about the 25 yard line and have a makeable field goal. To the flat, it's been there all day. And more yardage chewed up by Rafael Little to the 40. And the clock runs coming up on a minute to play. Kentucky. Still with a timeout, Tennessee with two. No panic, everything is good. Lonis, Andre Woodson, complete control. You saw Sieber on the sideline trying to warm up that leg if needed. Again, they go to the flat to the far side. Little running, breaks a tackle, and is stood up at the 31-yard line. It's the same play, opposite side of the field. You know, they've seen that Tennessee is doing nothing but just dropping back softly, and they're going to let Rafael Little catch that ball out there in the flat. Well, they better be careful because it's going to burn them here in a minute. They better get up and cover that. And Kentucky, of course, catches a break. The clock stops as they reset the chains on the first and 10. Here we go, 47 seconds left. Oh, very dangerous pass in traffic. Steve Johnson, the intended receiver, and the incompletion stops the clock with 44 ticks to play. So the 30-yard line would be the target. Sieber, his longest this season, 48 yards. But in this cold weather, and he hasn't kicked anything in a while other than an extra point, I, I think that realistically, Rich Brooks is thinking that 25-yard line probably gives him a 42, 43-yard kick. Uh-oh, illegal substitution. Well, please don't give it well, please. Substitution it on Kentucky. Well, people. Owen oh, Rich Brooks grabs and has a, a chat with the freshman Derek Locke. Yeah. What happened? Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where obviously Derek Locke thought he was supposed to be on the field. He went running out there, but nobody came off the field. And uh, that's one of the things the guy coming in has to do. You got to tap the guy you're going in for. Tell him he's coming out. Pushes it back now. Second down and 15. Woodson fires it up. Oh, over the oh, oh nearly man. picked off. Oh. Eric Berry had the interception, but Burton able to put his fist and pop that ball out of the grasp of Berry. And if anybody, the volunteers, wanted to have a chance at that interception, it was Eric Berry. The guy's got four on the year. He's, a, he's an unbelievable nose for the football and comes up with those big plays. Boy, Andre Woodson got away with one there. So now third down and 15. Trying to find some yardage to help out your kick receiver. To the far near sideline, spinning out of a tackle goes Dickie Lyons Jr. to the 19-yard line. Now the clock stops with the first down. Now you can start thinking you're in easy field goal range. Now you can take a couple shots at the end zone. Unbelievable. If you want. Yeah. Right now, if they would not gain a yard, it's a 37-yard kick. Exactly. So how aggressive you want to be, Rich Brooks and Joker Phillips? First and 10, Kentucky. 28 ticks left in regulation. Woodson sets up and fires. It's caught! Steve Johnson out of bounds at the six-yard line. You're not thinking field goal. You're thinking about victory in Lexington. You're darn right you are. And if I'm Andre Woodson, I'm thinking my offensive line is playing some great football this second half. They're giving me a chance to make these throws. He had all day back there, kept his poise, kept his cool, and then found Steve Johnson with a great throw on the sideline. Not only is the completion good for a first down, they get out of bounds, save that timeout. And Kentucky has not defeated Tennessee, let me remind you, in 22 years, 1984. First and goal, Kentucky at the five-yard line. 22 seconds to play. Under center goes Andre Woodson.
Woodson steps up, fires. Incomplete, Ooh. nearly intercepted by the freshman left corner, Brent Vincent. 17 seconds to play. Oh, that was close, Craig. I mean, Brent Vincent, now remember, he's a converted wide receiver, so he's got hands. They converted him because he was a tremendous athlete that needed help on the defensive side, and he's the guy that they felt could make that adjustment. Should have had that catch right there. Yeah, you started the season as a wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. And made the change midway. Yep, the Georgia game was his first start. Second down and goal. 17 seconds to play. Three-point Tennessee lead. Woodson to the corner. Jump ball. Incomplete. Yeah. There's a flag down, yep, P.I., and the intended receiver was Burton. That's interference, number 13 on the defense. Foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down, go. Okay, there's little contact now. Yep, he's in the face a little bit early. In Keenan Burton's face, Rich Brooks, yeah, he's saying, no doubt you got to throw that flag. That's right. Yeah, thank you. You got it, buddy. Second goal from the two, or first and goal from the two-yard line. You can get it in with the run, if not call a timeout. 13 seconds to play, first and goal. Rafael Little is the lone back. Kentucky with the football. Little up the middle. Stop the oh, No, stop, stop. Stopped at the one yard oh, line, and Kentucky will nah. use their last time out. You got to throw a quick pass at this point now. I mean, you're here, you're this far. You got to try and make something happen quick. Andre Woodson has to know I cannot take a sack at all. You can't take a sack. It's got to go into the end zone. It can't be a scramble, run around, and make something happen. It's got to be a quick throw that if it's either a touchdown or an incomplete pass, you got time for your kicker to get out there and make the kick. Tennessee, if needed, two timeouts. 17th play. 17th play at this drive. The resilience of that man, Andre Woodson, still coming back. They got a chance to get this thing turned around. Pass or run? You got to pass. Shotgun, low snap. Woodson dropped it, picks it up. Time down Going to away. five. Throws it to the end zone. Oh! Incomplete with one second to play. He, you know, <laughs> the Rich Brooks is going to pull him aside afterwards and say, "What do you what, do? You think you got all day? I mean, you got to make a quick throw. He drops the ball. I would have just thrown it through the uprights right as soon as that ball hit the ground. Stand up, throw it through the goalpost. Get your kicker out there and make the kick. You don't. And and you know what? He still almost threw a touchdown pass to Keenan Burton. He was open." So here we go, overtime. Lona Sieber, sophomore, Knoxville, Tennessee. 20-yard field goal will send it in to overtime. That's where we're headed. From 20 yards with one second on the clock, 31 all. A remarkable comeback by Kentucky to force overtime in Lexington. How about identical scores? First half, 24 to 7, Kentucky, or Tennessee. Second half, Kentucky outscores them 24 to 7. We've got 31 31 and an incredible overtime coming up, I think it's safe to say. Craig Bowler, Jack, Steve Berline, overtime in Lexington. And Steve, it's, it's been very simple all day long. Tennessee wins. They clinch the SEC East, go to Atlanta to play LSU for the SEC title. If they lose, Georgia would punch the ticket and head to Atlanta. So here we go. First overtime, Andre Woodson steps up, throws out of bounds, incomplete second down. This crowd quiet, all standing. I think they're in shock that we're in overtime. 31 <laughs> all, incredible comeback down 24-7 at the break. I wouldn't blame him. You talk about an emotional roller coaster. This has been it in every sense of the word. As you said, quarters one and two, totally different than quarters three and four. That's why you love this game. The momentum can change so quickly. It's a beautiful thing. Second down to 10 from the 25. 
Shotgun for Woodson. In motion goes Raphael Little. Three-step drop, fires it near side. It's caught at the 10-yard line and bumped out. On a bounds goes Keenan Burton, the senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Another good example right there of Woodson standing strong in the pocket. He was under some pressure, but delivered a strike. I don't really understand how Keenan Burton, they're, they're really their number one receiver, was that wide open out there in the flat. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but the bottom line is Woodson saw it and made a great throw. Now first and goal. At the eight-yard line, 31 all in overtime. Wide open. It's caught. Touchdown, Burton, Kentucky. Steve, they throw near side yeah. and come back with a far side catch wide open and Kentucky strikes. I can't really understand why Tennessee would be playing so soft. Yet Willingham, who's they've been up challenging the receivers all day, and here they get down close to the end zone and they just, in the overtime period, they give them two easy throws and it's a touchdown. You know, you let a receiver like Keenan Burton catch the ball one on one at the four yard line with about five yards to work with. He's going to get in most of the time. Extra point to come by Sieber. And punches it through. Wildcats have not defeated Tennessee since 1984, and a man named Reagan was in the White House. Ainge in the fourth quarter, one of eight, 10 yards and an interception. Under center goes Ainge. Stretches it out. Foster. Runs it outside, down the sideline, and is bumped out of bounds and will stop the clock. Well, the clock's no, not running here in overtime. Arian Foster, terrific afternoon by this young guy. The junior from San Diego. Third down and two, Tennessee. This crowd ready to break into a frenzy. Angel step back in shotgun formation. Right alongside is Foster. They need two for a first down. Direct snap goes to Foster. First down. Oh, and he delivers a blow out of bounds. And he put the hurt. And I mean, he put the hit <laughs> on the Kentucky Wildcats. My goodness, that was uh, David Jones who absorbed that hit from Arian Foster. Yeah, David Jones caught a mouthful of shoulder. And you know, when we were talking to Arian Foster yesterday down there in the field before their walkthrough. He is a big man. Oh, he is yes. a load. Those two and a quarter. First and 10, Tennessee at the 13 of Kentucky. In the first overtime, 38-31. Wildcats, far side. Once again, the workhorse Foster takes it out of bounds. And that brings up second down. Foster hit by Harrison, the free safety. Well, you know, Rich Brooks told us it's about depth. He's gained respect for this Kentucky program once again. You know, you always think about basketball when you think about Lexington and Big Blue. No, no. Football. Football is big in Lexington. Second down and nine. Shotgun. Ainge steps back to the end zone. Man coverage. Oh! <laughs> what a grab by Gerald Jones, the freshman. You have got to be kidding. They just on his back, and he pulls it in. They just keep coming out of the woodwork. Gerald Jones, how many catches does he have on the year? But what a none. Seventh big. reception for the freshman from Oklahoma City. And none, safe to say, bigger than that one right there. Look at that adjustment and catching that ball. Two hands up now. for Philip Fulmer. Daniel Lincoln now must hit the extra point to send it to the second overtime. Good snap, good hold, and punches it through. So we head to the second overtime. And Tennessee will have possession here in the second overtime. 38 all after 
Burton touchdown for Kentucky and Gerald Jones's first career touchdown for Tennessee. Ball start on the ground to Foster who pushes to the 21. Foster has done everything and more for Tennessee today. You know, and something I think, Craig, that doesn't get a lot of attention is how difficult it is when a team finishes second and they score a touchdown at one end of the field. They got to come back right away. They get the ball back again. They got to score another touchdown. That's hard to do. Second down and six. Ainge with a quick glance to the sideline. Crowd is on their feet. Under center, Ainge. Ball's batted up. Intercepted. Sam Maxwell. The sophomore <laughs> from Hartwell, Georgia. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Good defense. That was Trevard Lindley again finding a way to make a play. Watch, he gets his hand on the ball, gets that head around, finds it, knocks it up in the air. And there's Maxwell in the right place at the right time, going to the football and bringing it in. Third interception by Kentucky secondary. And now the Wildcats will have their chance to win and break a 22-year drought against Tennessee. Question is whether Woodson wants to leave it to his kicker or do it himself. Woodson. Handoff, bouncing outside, goes little. And they'll lose a couple back to around the 26, maybe the 27 yard. And Dennis Rogan, the freshman, put a good hit on Rafael Little. I think you keep calling safe plays if you're, if you're Kentucky. And a, and a safe play could be a throw to the end zone. You know, you throw a fade pattern to the outside if you want to try and go to it quick, if you don't want to put it in your kicker's hands. But you sure don't try and kick the ball from here. You still right now you got a, a 38 yard kick if you try and kick from this point. Third down and four at the 20 yard line. Second overtime. Kentucky and Tennessee. He's got man coverage. Could easily take a shot at the end zone here. Ball show pressure. Up the middle they go. Short of the first down at the 17 yard line. Rafael Little. And now you uh, go for the win. And all the pressure is on the shoulders of Lona Sieber. This will be a 35-yard attempt for the win and the upset of Tennessee. Yeah, and, and, and I believe there might be a little celebration in Lexington if this thing goes through. And coming in to this game, Sieber, 6 of 7 from this range on the season. It nope. comes down to this. Lona Sieber's right foot. 35-yarder. Here we go. Picked up after the block. Tennessee rumbling. Still throwing that ball. It's still loose. My goodness, could it be? Oh, that may be a face mask. Multiple flags are down at the 35-yard line. The field goal blocked, and Tennessee had a chance <laughs> to run it back. Are you kidding me? I don't think the penalty will affect anything because Tennessee was on defense. They can't run their kicker out, and it just becomes uh, the next overtime period. By rule, when we have a change of possession in overtime, and there is a foul, that foul is disregarded. The try is over. We're going into third overtime period. Unbelievable. Third overtime. And this is what happened. The 35-yard attempt coming from the corner. Oh, and just got a piece. It, it looked to me like that was Big Dan Williams. It was. Number 55. 55. Yep. Getting that big right paw up, and there's coming through the left guard gap right there. There it is. The hand goes up his left hand, actually. Yeah, hit him right in the elbow. Oh, well, now Kentucky in the third overtime at the 25-yard line. Back under center goes Woodson. 
Three-step drop, near side. Pitch and catch, big grab. Burton out of bounds. <laughs> First and 10. Hand off, Little. All day long, running inside and out. Craig, one thing that's uh, that's worth noting right here. Now you've got Dennis Rogan, the uh, the return specialist, who's out there on the left corner for Tennessee, and Woodson knows that. Believe me, he knows that. The true freshman Vincent went out a little earlier with that shoulder injury. He was moved over to corner because of their injuries and lack of experience at the corner position. So Rogan really is the guy that did not fit into their plans at corner going into this season. A touchdown would force Kentucky because of the rules to go for two. That's what happens on uh, during the third overtime. So here we go. 38 all second down seven. Andre Woodson steps up pumps pulls it back down throws it up and over the top. Incomplete off the hands of Johnson. Oh he had it took a little bump and dropped it. And this is a play that I think if you ask Rich Brooks if you want to take your chances who do you want to make that catch It's Steve Johnson. He's going to make that catch probably seven or eight times out of ten. Look, at he gets both those big mitts on the ball. Just didn't quite control it when he came down. D'Angelo Willingham on that second effort right there just yep, punched it yep. out. Did a great job of just getting in there. Just punched it out. So now, Steve, we're looking at third down. You have to get to the five, just inside the five-yard line for fresh downs. Kentucky 9 of 18 on the day on third down conversions. Woodson, three-step drop, man coverage of the end zone. Touchdown, got Burton! Got it for <laughs> Kentucky! Two-point conversion, a must on the th in the third overtime. Well, I really thought it was going to come. You had a bump and run on Steve Johnson on this side on Rogan, but Woodson decides to challenge the other side on Willingham, and great job by Keenan Burton of spin look he he fakes and got Willingham a little bit disoriented he had a great release got up got up on top of him on the outside Willingham never had a chance to look back and make a play on that ball it was in the perfect location from Woodson and Burton times it beautifully knows exactly where his feet have to come down now the ever important two point conversion oh this is where it gets interesting you take it back out and you have to run it in or pass for the two point conversion Two wide receivers near side. Under center goes Woodson. Huge second half. And in overtime. Pulls that ball back down. Looks back the other way. Pulls it back down. Throws it. And it's taken away by Tennessee. Its ball is dropped. Still on the loose out of bounds. And again, we've seen <laughs> another trick in the bag. I can't believe Kentucky didn't fall on that in the end zone to convert the two-point conversion. They had a chance at it. The, the way this game is going, nothing would surprise me, but Andre Woodson just saying, you know what, it's a two-point conversion. Nobody's open. I'm just going to get rid of it instead of taking a sack. Interception. Ball is knocked out right there. Look at now. Had a chance almost to fall on it there in the end zone. Don't know who that was. Now we have Tennessee at the 25-yard line in the third overtime. And already we see the effect of that rule. It's got to be a two-point conversion. Five wide receivers set, three set to the near side. Eric Ames, shotgun, steps, looks near side, goes far side, and not much. Good read by Kentucky's defense. Lucas Taylor picks up two, and he's hit by the free safety, Calvin Harrison. You know, one thing we haven't talked about all night, Craig, is the red zone offense and defense of either of these teams. And it's, a, it's amazing when you look at the stats. They're all offensively and defensively at 64% as far as either scoring touchdowns or giving up touchdowns. So it's dead even. Tennessee, third down, five of 15 on third down tries in this game. From the shotgun once again, from the 30 yard line, pressure, slingshots it to the flat. It's caught, Gerald Jones high steps it inside the, the five. First down. And yes, fresh downs for Tennessee. What 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 an incredible instinctive play by this guy. You said he was the Oklahoma State player of the year. Look at the instinct. He catches this ball. He's well short of the of the first down. He, but he says, you know what? I'm going to just split this double team and go straight ahead and make sure that I get this first down. First and 10 at the 13 yard line. 
quick throw, far side, it's caught. Rodgers, touchdown, oh. Tennessee! Now, here we go. Two-point conversion. <laughs> and if they punch in two, punch the ticket to Atlanta and the SEC title game. Yes, sir. You don't think Georgia fans are chewing the nails right now? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I guarantee you, Mike Rick knows exactly what's going on right now. He's got somebody. Mark Rick, I'm sorry. Mark Rick is the guy that he knows exactly what's going on on the sidelines. And somehow, Austin Rogers, there you go, split the two defenders and hopped and skipped in for the touchdown. Well, it was, it was just a, a perfectly executed play. The right call at the right time again. That throw, the key is to make sure you can get the ball to the receiver with some space. And then he had great blocking on the outside, and Philip Fulmer knows that is exactly the way we draw up that play now. <laughs> So the two-point conversion is next, and if they find the end zone, they find Atlanta. Yes, sir, they do. SEC championship game next week against LSU. Is it going to be Tennessee or is it going to be Georgia? Will it be Arian Foster or Lucas Taylor or Austin Rogers for Tennessee? Ainge, shotgun. Here we go, third overtime, and a trip to Atlanta. It's going to be Foster. Can he turn the corner? No! <laughs> we head to the fourth overtime. Oh, man. David Jones. Unbelievable open field tackle. You got the motion coming across by Lucas Taylor to seal the backside. Give it to your big horse. David Jones says he's not too big for me to bring down. I'm going to take his legs out. Look at that perfect timing. Jones has made several big tackles in this game. The unsportsmanlike foul on number 27 on Tennessee will move the ball to the 40-yard line. So Arian Foster, and that costs 15 yards for Tennessee. It, it looked like a very small thing, and I, I really... Honestly, Craig, I'm really disappointed this call would be made at this point in the ball game with so much riding on it. You'll see after Aaron Foster gets tackled here on the sideline, you're going to see he just rolls over and immediately stands up and just throws the ball in the air. That's all it is. And I, 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 I understand delay of game and all that, but this is the SEC championship on the line. You don't. You don't throw a, 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 a debatable flag in a situation like that. Now, Tennessee's got to go 40 yards instead of 25. Fourth overtime in Lexington. 44 all. Ain shotgun. Good protection up and over. Wide open. Stumbling. <laughs> Five. Touchdown. Quentin Hancock. Then again, I guess it just doesn't matter. Who cares about the 40 <laughs> yards? Oh. Quentin Hancock was so wide open on this play that, that this disciplined Kentucky defense completely lost their discipline as they have done several times tonight and given up a lot of big plays to Tennessee. I mean, Eric Ainge comes out and he sees how open Hancock is and he's thinking, it can't be. Well, Hancock was so open, he nearly lost his footing and stumbled at the 15-yard line. You just don't get that open. Two, on the first play of a drive. Two-point conversion now for Tennessee. Three wide receivers, top of your screen. Ainge, as he has most of the day, drops back in shotgun formation. Fourth overtime. Two-point conversion on the way. Ainge steps up, throws, dumps, hits it. Two-point conversion. Austin Rodgers and will be back. Kentucky must answer after this. Fourth overtime, and Kentucky must find the end zone and convert on a two-point conversion. Rafael Little bounces. That ball, I thought, popped down. Did he grab it back? And he did at the 17-yard line. A pickup of seven, maybe eight. Boy, Rafael Little running so hard for Kentucky. The same for Arian Foster for Tennessee. That's a pickup of eight. Second down and two. Fourth overtime. 52-44. Tennessee working for a trip to Atlanta. 
of the SEC title game. Every one of these overtime drives is a gut check for both the offense and the defense. Big play after big play tonight. Draw play. Lock. Stacked up and dropped at the 14-yard line. Now, we've played most likely, Steve. This game has gone on now for four and a half hours. Am I right? After 6 o'clock Eastern. I think you're right. I think you're 100% hey, right. You're, you're talking about, about a game and a half of football. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a long time, but I, I'll tell you what, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Are you kidding me? Want to play all night? Let's, oh, let's, let's do keep it. it going. First and ten. I don't know how our buddies Vern and Gary would feel about this down in Florida, but. They stretch it out to Derek Locke. Has room at the ten. Cut back at the five and slides to the three-yard line. Oh, this kid's going to be good for Kentucky. Yeah, he, he, I like the way he runs the football. Listen to this, Craig. You want to hear some pretty impressive uh, passing stats tonight? Combine these two quarterbacks. 67 of 107 passes, five interceptions, and 13 touchdowns. <laughs> and Steve, it's very simple. In overtime, you must score. You got uh, Tennessee has the lead. They went for two, of course, and scored. And now Kentucky must score, and then for the two-point conversion. Yes. yes. To send this game to a fifth overtime, first and goal at the two-yard line. Locke is the lone back. Had a word with Woodson. Locke, the ball carrier. Pop through. Did he get in? Well, he's close. He's They're going to run up. He's about a half a yard shy inside the one-yard line. Oh, Touchdown. they gave it to him. They gave it to him. The officials ran in. They wanted to see where the ball was. Well, actually, they've broken the plane, and it did. Yes, sir. You see, boy, he hits that hole up. He, he only, they only have him listed at 180 pounds, but he runs strong. Broke the plane. Yeah. Yep. Pushed back, but he broke the plane. Now the two-point conversion to and send this game into a fifth overtime. Now, here's the problem, Craig. When you get into a situation like this, this much scoring and this many opportunities, you have a certain number of plays in game plan for inside that five-yard line, inside the three-yard line. The, I think right now you're pretty much drawing them in the dirt because you've used them all. You've been in there too many times to say, okay, we'll go to our next two-point play, our next play inside the three-yard line. You've gone through who knows how many in that particular situation. You've got to get creative now and, and probably run a play you haven't practiced at all. And, and so basically is this. They've scouted you. They've looked at you on film. I speak of Tennessee. Right. They know your tendencies. You want to pull one out of the bag right now. Out of the bag that, that might catch them off guard but that you haven't practiced because you've used all the plays that you've got. Now, do you go back? Sure, you can go back and run a play that, that maybe did or didn't work earlier and try and catch him off guard. But coaches in this situation, they want to try and come up with something that the opponent has not seen yet. Eric Ainge on the bench awaits if needed. 52-50, two-point conversion must be scored by Kentucky. If they fail, Tennessee wins the East and earns a trip to play LSU in the SEC title game next weekend on CBS. 52-50, Vols have the arms locked on the sideline. Rich Brooks looks on determinedly. Different formation, just flipped it to the left side. Yes, they did, three wide outs near side, the lone back locked, lined up alongside Andre Woodson, here we go. Kentucky must score, the two point conversion to force the fifth overtime, pressure. Woodson has room, tackle from behind, it's fumbled, and Tennessee is headed to Atlanta. A 